Okay. Uh, so first, I'd uh, start by thanking the organizers for this wonderful uh, conference. I also, I mean, apart from being very special occasion, uh, felicitating HRK and Chandan, uh, it's also very nice. I mean, uh, we had different kinds of talks in uh, classical and quantum systems, exceptional science, uh, teaching, everything. Uh, so I was a student in physics department IIC. Uh, and I was fortunate to actually work with several people. I worked with HRK, Chandan, PVR, Subroto, and uh, so had a lot of discussions and learned a lot from them. Uh, so with HRK, I was working on some problem on mechanics, and that was my first problem on quantum many body systems. So all whatever little knowledge I have of quantum many body, uh, it was initiated by discussing with HRK. Uh, and it's actually true that some of the discussion HRK did fall asleep. Uh, but uh, so I, but I stood the ground unlike Mongol Mahato and uh, I was in the board and HRK got up, uh, wake, woke up and again like always he asked very important questions and directed uh, to a particular directions which was very useful. Uh, it's very amazing quality that he has. Uh, with uh, Chandan actually, uh, I mean we had really great overlap because, uh, so we are also working in the nights, so we had a room which was rather infamous, uh, it's known as 117 and several members are here in the audience and we used to spend the, the night in that room and Chandan also for the last part of the night was in his room which was just beside that room. So the room was really loud uh, and so we survived that uh, time and Chandan also did survive. So thanks to him for that. Now <laughs> one of the thing about Chandan is that we are really inspired by him uh, and uh, different things like teaching and science of course. But also his uh, like approach, it was very gentle. And another thing we are fascinated about Chandan was his walking style. So it was very gentle and very elegant and you never know when he's behind you. So one of the thing that we used to tell that even though he works in classical system, he has a quantum nature. So there is a creation and annihilation operator for Chandan. So you are cracking some jokes about some faculties and you suddenly appear behind you. So, okay, so that was really nice and uh, great experience uh, to be in the night in the department. Uh, okay, with that I will start my talk. Uh, so this uh, is a work that I have been recently doing on uh, stability of many body localization in higher dimension and these are the people, uh, so these are the people, uh, Ehud Altman uh, from UC Berkeley and uh, graduate student uh, Dragos uh, who is also at UC Berkeley. Uh, so. <coughs> So let me begin by uh, the obvious beginning which was in 1958 uh, this remarkable paper by Anderson uh, which uh, basically showed that uh, if you have uh, some quantum particle uh, moving in some random uh, potential landscape uh, like this and then Anderson argued that there are two radically different consequence of a quantum state. So this is a single particle state there is no interaction so one single electron moving in this random landscape. So Anderson argued that there are two consequences, two radically different consequences. The states could be either localized, in which case uh, they are localized around certain point in space uh, with a localization link xi and around some certain points in space or it could be extended in which case wave functions are just decided by the normalization, essentially the system size which is L. And of course this was uh, greatly extended by uh, work of this gang of four work. Uh, by Ramakrishnan et al, uh, the scaling theory of localization and uh, nicely discussed in this uh, uh, review of modern physics. Uh, so now one of the questions that bothered people for a long time and Anderson of course considered it uh, for a long time and he had very important paper on this also uh, which is about this question that let's say you have this uh, system, this let's say for example we take a very simple model, some model of tight binding electrons moving in some random uh, potentials which is drawn between some distributions with a strength w, minus w to w. Now you ask that what happens, uh, so okay, so given this system of course this is a non-interacting system, you can just diagonalize it in a computer and you will find that there are these localized states, okay. Uh, 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 in 1D and 2D all states are localized, so all states will be of this form even though the localization link could be very large if the disorder is weak, however you will get this localized state. Uh, and then the question is that now if you add interactions uh, to this picture because any real system will have interaction. Uh, so just to model you just a simplistic uh, interaction like this some density density interactions like this. 
So you can write these interactions now in this basis of this localized state. So it will have this form. Now, uh, even if you have this all states localized in the single particle sector, when you add interaction, you see that this interaction connects all this single particle localized state. In fact, you can argue that all at high energies interact essentially connects exponentially large number of states in the Hilbert space. So the question is really intricate question and really hard to answer question is this localization stable to interaction and that is the question of many body localization. So can even in the presence of interactions uh, can you still have uh, the, uh, localization. So now uh, this answer was given in beautiful set of uh, papers, uh, set of works uh, by this general people Basco, Alena, Alsular and at the same time or slightly before it probably Gorney, Merlin and Polyakov, uh, they basically they gave the answer they said yes. Uh, for, for sufficiently strong disorder, if you start with all states localized, then you should have many body localization. And over the years, many people over the last 12 years, essentially it has been extensively studied uh, and uh, the beautiful kind of beautiful picture emerges out of this. So this is the phase diagram sort of uh, between uh, this uh, transition. So there is, uh, so in a generic system with interaction and disorder, so you can plot uh, the temperature or the energy density as a function of disorder strength. And then uh, at high disorder you have a localized phase uh, at finite temperature even and then there is a uh, finite temperature transition or a many body mobility edge when this localized state go to delocalized state. And if you have a bounded uh, so spectrum of a model then you can even have localized state at infinite temperature where all the states are occupied. So that means almost all eigenstates are localized even uh, at, so, uh, at very high energies. So this is the many body localization we now understand a lot. Now but if you think that, uh, so what is the real proof of this existence? Of course uh, the original argument was a perturbative, this was this Basco Alainer uh, paper, they perturbatively showed that this localization is stable and then there are a lot of numerical evidence but the numerical evidences are mostly tied to one dimension. So uh, and then of course there is a mathematical proof by Imbri uh, which uh, shows that in 1D indeed there is. MBL at least for certain models. And uh, but in higher dimensions the proof is only perturbative. Uh, this is this Pascua Lehner Alsular proof and there is no other uh, real evidence because uh, and the perturbative proof essentially works by arguing that the interaction is uh, essentially much weaker than some uh, energy scale which comes from disorder which is uh, uh, the level spacing within a localization volume uh, with a localization length xi. So when this is much smaller than one then their proof works and, uh, and, uh, and it works in any dimension if you start with all states localized. Uh, but the question that people have started asking so are there non perturbative effects uh, which we cannot access by this perturbation theory and we can't do numerics in two dimensions because it's very hard. So are there non perturbative effects that can destabilize MBL in higher dimension. And uh, there are certain arguments that were given recently uh, by these people uh, De Roeck and Huvineas. Uh, so they actually argued that there is a one kind of instability which suggests that any higher dimension, any dimension higher than one there could not be one MBL phase. And the argument, I will come to the detail argument but uh, basically the idea is that you assume that there is a MBL phase, so assume that there is a localized phase but then you say that in a thermodynamic system uh, there is always, uh, there will be a rare regions, rare regions which are very large but very weak disorder. So this criteria does not hold in this red blob here. So almost everywhere this criteria holds so the Basco Alainer thing is okay. But in this region this is completely violated. So in a thermodynamically large system you can always have such regions. And then what they argued that this blob, this th what we call a thermal bubble is basically will devote the whole system. So that there is some argument that basically this MBL is unstable to such bubbles. Okay, and so, so, so that means it, there is a contradiction, you cannot have MBL in higher dimension. So that is what I am going to discuss. So let me uh, say that uh, some outline. So I am uh, give a little bit of introduction to MBL, then I will discuss this instability argument and then I will uh, try to test this instability argument uh, in using some solvable models and uh, exact diagonalizations for smaller systems and try to see whether how, how, how far this argument is correct. Mm and then conclude. Okay, so uh, what about the models of MBL? So uh, you can, these are basically uh, I models, uh, simple lattice models, David discussed about this. 
models yesterday. So, the model that I, I earlier showed, this tight binding model of with some nearest neighbor density density interactions. So, uh, this is spinless fermion. So, each side you have essentially two states 0 or 1 and the Hilbert space dimension is 2 to the power n exponentially large in the number of sites. And this, uh, so there are of course, people have studied uh, uh, disorder spin chains which is 1D is related to this model by uh, Jordan Wigner transformation. And again, uh, you put the disorder in some uh, uh, Zeeman field uh, in this model uh, which is drawn from some random distributions. And there are of course, uh, disordered Hubbard model, transverse spillizing models with some interaction terms that people have studied. So, these are the models of MBL and the questions that we are asking is about the eigenstates. So, here we are not really talking about low energy ground states or thermodynamics, we are interested in the eigenstates. And so, the idea is that if you give this in a computer, you can find out the eigenstate and eigen energies and these are many body eigen energies and many body eigenstates. And typically, we will talk about this kind of models which has bounded spectrum. So, uh, so the question of my MBL is really question about localization and if uh, somewhat surprisingly thermalization of a single eigenstate. So, let me define what is what I mean by uh, thermalization of a single eigenstate. So, actually till now the best definition of MBL we have is in terms of what it is not. So, the definition is that uh, MBLs are states which which is defined by lack of thermalization. So, it's, so, the lack of thermalization actually define MBL and let me define what I mean by thermalization and how it is connected to localization. Okay, so the idea of eigenstate thermalization comes from this influential work by Doesh and Srednicki and this is known by the name of eigenstate thermalization hypothesis or ETH in short. So, what it tells, it talks about uh, how you basically approach, so uh, start with a large thermodynamic system, how you approach quantum statistical mechanics and can you approach quantum statistical mechanics even if you start from single eigenstate. So, if you look at single eigenstate, there is no entropy, it is one state, right, but you are still trying to build a thermodynamics or quantum statistical mechanics for a single eigenstate and that is the idea of eigenstate thermalization. So, typically you look at high energies somewhere in the middle of the band, somewhere here, but the level spacing is typically exponentially small in the number of uh, size or number of degrees of freedom. And then the idea, the way you check this eigenstate thermalization, you say, okay, I take the system and I divide the system into two parts, A and B, A with some size L, and then I define this reduced density matrix tracing out this degrees of freedom here. And the eigenstate thermalization tells that if this is the eigenstate is thermalized, then this density matrix which is just a quantum density matrix should be equal to a equivalent uh, an equivalent Gibbs ensemble, Gibbs uh, density matrix and similarly you can define something called entanglement entropy uh, which also has to be like thermal, thermal entropy. It should for just uh, be extensive in the system size follow, follow a volume law. Now, what MBL does, MBL states that this ETH actually fails in the MBL state. So, they actually does not the, the do not satisfy this uh, Gibbs ensemble and they have an entanglement entropy which is a an area law. Okay, that is how it violates. So, that is the definition of MBL for us. Uh, now, uh, so there is actually, uh, so how do we think about the system? It turns out that there is a nice description which is known as the effective model uh, for MBL. So, it is again start with this model that I discussed. You write the model in this uh, localized Eigen basis. There are these electronic operators which are given in terms of the single particle uh, wave functions. <laughs> now, it turns out that the MBL, uh, the MBL state can be thought of as, as a fixed point. There is a fixed point Hamiltonian for the <laughs> MBL state and there is an emergent integrability. So, when you are in the MBL state, there is a complete set of local integrals of motions which are conserved quantity which do not evolve under the dynamics. Uh, so, they emerge in the MBL a fixed point and they can be written by a model which is completely conserved, defined by a conserved numbers which are these number operators, they commute with each other and with the Hamiltonian. So, this is completely classical description that emerges because the system does not evolve because there is no quantum fluctuations term here that will make this system evolve. And all these uh, quantities you can derive the uh, in some scheme, uh, they are all, all local. So, they decay with the localization length of the original Anderson insulator. Now, this uh, this quantities can be constructed uh, by 
perturbative theory which uh, Bascal Lehner did. This is the locator expansion in the Fox space. Uh, that's what they did. However, it turns out there is a really nice way to do it and it was shown by these people that this effective Hamiltonian in a non-perturbative way can be constructed as a real space RG fixed point. And this real space RG which what uh, the Ch Chandan developed with Ma uh, long time back. So, they basically generalized uh, this uh, real space RG to look into excited state. So, it's really a remarkable uh, use of this uh, real uh, uh, Dasgupta Ma RG uh, that has given us good understanding of this uh, phase, a non perturbative understanding of emergence of MBL. Okay, now I'll uh, not, so there are properties of MBL, I'll, there are several interesting properties like uh, this if you create some local quantum information, they persist for infinitely long time. Uh, the quantum, the dynamics is essentially uh, always the, the quantum informations uh, that stays. So, you can't reach a classical hydrodynamic descriptions uh, and uh, there is an area law entanglement entropy that is interesting entanglement growth. Uh, but the particular one that I am going to talk about or discuss as a dis diagnostic of MBL is this one which is in terms of some local spectral properties which David was also discussing yesterday. So, it turns out if all these holes if ETS does not work then MBL states uh, the consequence will be that they will have a discrete local spectra. So, uh, the spectra will have mostly zeros and there are sharp peaks. Uh, however, when you have a thermalized system, uh, then you will have a continuous spectra. So, this is how you can distinguish between uh, MBL uh, localized state and delocalized state. So, let me explain what I mean by the spectra. So, this spectra is obtained from some single particle Green's functions like this. So, this is the spectral function. And we are talking about a spectral function of a single eigenstate. So, this is not a, th a thermal spectral function. We take one eigenstate and define this. Uh, so, that is the spectral function we have to look into and that will be like this. So, if we can calculate the spectral function, we can detect MBL from that. And as if you define a thermal spectral function which is some weighted average of this which will be continuous and you can show generically even in MBL system. Uh, this uh, spectra, if you define such a spectra at any finite temperature, generically they are continuous and uh, and the reason is that uh, even though different eigenstates of this peak structure, the peaks will be in different position for different eigenstates and when you average this will be filled up completely and you will always get continuous spectra. So, thermal spectra is not good way to look into localization and you can uh, look into thermal spectra at infinite temperature for bounded system which is essentially given by this where d is the Hilbert space dimension let us say 2 to the power n. And uh, of course, uh, if, uh, the, uh, the if the state is delocalized then uh, this uh, ETS suggests that this two has to be this two will match meaning that in the delocalized state this thermal spectrum and the eigenstate spectrum at a given temperature which has some internal energy corresponding to the same energy of the eigenstate will actually match. So, that is how you detect uh, detect MBL. So, now let me come to the actual. Uh, <coughs> so, this is how. So, I described you what are the basic characteristic of MBL. So, let me now talk about this uh, instability. So, what is this instability we are talking about? So, again I remind you what we are considering is a uh, ins insulating state Anderson insulator MBL insulator uh, <coughs> and in uh, in the in some region there is a very rare region which has very low disorder, uh, low disorder and uh, interaction is very large. So, this region is essentially thermal. So, if you look into this region essentially they satisfy some random matrix uh, or ETH in the local ok and this thing is coupled, these two things are coupled, this is inside an insulator and the argument uh, that I will now show you uh, it says that uh, the at higher dimension this will always destabilize the MBL. So, there is no MBL in higher dimension. So, let me give the instability argument. Now, we will like to see that how it fails. So, this is the argument. So, what you do is you model this system with a, so there is an Anderson insulator around and there is a thermal region. So, you can write the Hamiltonian in general as a, uh, we call it a bubble. So, it is a Hamiltonian of the bubble, Hamiltonian of the insulating state and there is a coupling term ok. So, that is the Hamiltonian. Now, how do we describe, describe the bubble? So, bubble is described in terms of some random matrix theory which satisfies ETH. So, this is a uh, uh, Hamiltonian which is a 2 to the power n cross 2 to the power n matrix, the GOE random matrix and it has a level spacing which is uh, given by some many body bandwidth divided by 2 to the power n. So, it has a exponentially small level spacing. 
So this is very different from a non-interacting system. We will not have it in the non-interacting system. Now, how do you describe the insulator? The insulator is described in terms of this MBL effective model that I showed you. Uh, and our purpose actually will completely neglect uh, this interaction term because we are taking the worst case scenario where the MBL is actually an Anderson insulator. Interaction is very weak. So, we are deep in the MBL phase. And even then this argument should tell me that this MBL is unstable. So, given this model though, so there are this <coughs> conserved quantity written in terms of some fermionic operator which has these wave functions. Uh, so, you can think in terms of the lattice uh, operator in terms of this localized in, in the localized basis. And there is a coupling. So, now, uh, so the coupling is just simple uh, 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 this kind of uh, coupling where the coupling term uh, effectively decays as a function of distance uh, from this uh, bubble away from this distance uh, exponentially. Uh, so, the, the length scale that comes is the localization length of the non-interacting insulator. So, that is how this coupling uh, decays ok. So, that is the model. So, the question is can the single bubble destroy the whole MBL system <coughs> ok. Let us see how it happens. So, uh, ETH so since you have assumed the random matrix theory this ETH tells me that the matrix element uh, for certain operator like this C dagger between two many body eigenstates of this bubble is given by this kind of a form. So, there is a level spacing which appears here and there is the spectral function that I talked about and the spectral function this is since this is a thermal system is same as the eigenstate spectral function supposed to be same as the eigenstate spectral function and there is some random number and this omega is the difference of energies between the eigenstates. So, this spectral function will have some uh, semicircular form. Uh, so, that is the thing. Now, what we do you consider one single site one Anderson site coupled to this bubble. So, we ask what happens. So, now so there is a coupling uh, to this bubble. So, uh, by uh, of the uh, Anderson insulator site. Uh, now, you can argue that if there is uh, if uh, the matrix element. So, this is the matrix element of coupling between this thermal bubble and the site. So, you can argue that if the matrix element divided by the level spacing of the bubble is greater than 1, then there is a Fermi golden rule rate decay of this site. So, that means that site will be irreversibly lost to the bubble. So, that means it will be part of the bubble itself. So, uh, so, so then what happens so if this is satisfied then if you couple the first site in the Anderson insulator closest to this bubble then now the, uh, the site will be absorbed in the bubble. So, you have to think the site as a part of the bubble. So, what happens is yes. Yes, that is right. So, because you are comparing every exponent. Hmm. Yeah, that is right. So, this is the level spacing which is extremely small. Right. So, even with a uh, B which is sufficiently small you can go. Ok. So, now, so now when the, so what happens if the site become part of the bubble? So, wonderful thing happens the thing is that this bubble gets stronger meaning the level spacing. So, now the Hilbert space dimension has expanded. Now, we have another side to it. So, in Hilbert space dimension has expanded 2 to the power n plus 1. So, the level spacing of this combined bubble is now smaller. So, it has gained in the level spacing. Now, the question is what happened to the spectral functions? So, these people argue that the spectral functions using some assumptions of the eigenstate remains basically same. When you add one single side it does not change which is looks reasonable because one single side how can it change the whole bubble. Right. So, that is the idea and they argue for it. However, if you assume this is true, uh, so the thermal bubble gets uh, stronger it grows. However, if you assume that this is true, then uh, if you continue this argument for let us say you, you can do uh, you can continue this argument for a distance r from the bubble. So, then uh, if you go to this distance until this distance this argument holds, then the level spacing actually has decreased by this amount. So, the, there is a size r to the power d uh, of this region. So, the level spacing has decreased by this amount and if you ask about the matrix element to add another uh, site now to this expanded bubble that is given by this. So, there is a exponentially small number here also because uh, the coupling is exponentially small. So, now what you have to if you now ask whether this site will be absorbed to this bigger bubble 
then that is given by this ratio j r by delta r which are this modified level spacing and the and now new matrix element and that can be written like this. Now, you can see that if r, if d is 1 then ok you this two thing can compete and you can still have a localized state. However, if d is greater than 1 then this thing uh, as r going to infinity will always grow and this quantity will always grow higher than 1. So, that means uh, this Fermi golden rule uh, rule uh, set will be always satisfied even for infinite large system and that means this bubble will take the whole system. Yes, right. So, it is preposterous right it cannot happen we know this is wrong right, but we have to argue why this is wrong. So, I am showing the worst case scenario where there is no interaction even in the insulating state and even this argument seems to suggest that the whole system will be unstable. It should not be we know right, but we have to show how it is not. So, that is the that is the main thing of the work. So, so this suggests that no MBL in higher 2 and higher dimension. ok. So, see this is hard to prove or disprove because it is very hard to do numerics in uh, 2D yeah. mm -hmm. ok yeah. Yeah, but ok. So, one thing is the numerics as I discussed with you we have to uh, include this rare region. So, that is generally not done when you do a small system numerics the rare regions is very rare to catch. Ok. So, now uh, ok. So, now what we are I am going to do what we have done is basically uh, constructed some uh, toy models for this bubble uh, where you can calculate the spectral function. So, we want to test whether this assumption the spectral function remains same is true. So, for that we have constructed this uh, toy model. So, where the bubble is described by a Sajdevia Kitai model I will discuss this model little bit also by a uh, large dimension and Hubbard model which can be solvable in DMFT. And then you have coupled to this Anderson insulator and both these models you can calculate the spectral function in a controlled manner though the thermal spectral function. But I will show even there uh, there is a drastic uh, uh, drastic violation of this assumption uh, in the spectral function. And then I will show that uh, some exact diagonalization result for small system uh, where we show for the particular limit uh, that uh, there also there is a violation of this assumption. So, I am going to talk about two limits in by two different techniques. So, first when the localization length is large meaning larger compared to the size of this bubble which is uh, like n to the power 1 over d where d being 2 is uh, square root of n. Uh, so, then I will show that the instability argument breaks down by some dynamical transition in the spectral function of the bubble. And in the other limit I will show by ed which can be accessed by exact diagonalization that the instability arguments also breaks down. Ok. So, this is um, the thing that we are going to do we are going to model this um, bubble by a Sajde B A Kitaev model I will just describe the model in the next slide and then we are going to do a control calculation for a large but finite n of the spectral function and we are going to check whether this assumption is correct or not that the spectral function remains same ok that is what we are going to do. So, uh, so we are going to show that uh, the bar spectral function actually changes. So, this is actually wrong by a back reaction of the insulator. So, let me describe the model. So, Sajde V A Kitaev model is an interacting uh, solvable model. Uh, uh, so, this is uh, uh, basically there are n sites of fermions which are interacting by these four fermion interactions and they are coupled by some uh, <laughs> disorder coupling uh, which is drawn from some Gaussian distribution like this and there are n sites of this uh, Sajde V A Kitaev model. So, this can be solved in some large n theory I will not go into uh, in the large n saddle point I will not go into the detail of it, but you can calculate the spectral function of this model exactly. Uh, it has some interesting features which has attracted lot of attentions recently uh, in fields related to holography and others. Uh, so, turns out that this model is a solvable model of thermalization you can basically calculate in interacting model some characteristic of thermalization namely something called a Lyapunov exponent uh, which characterize how fast the system thermalizes. And uh, this Lyapunov exponent in this model is uh, universal uh, quantity is given by temperature only uh, and uh, this is known as a maximally chaotic uh, system uh, it is like a black hole and probably has some dual gravity picture. So, that is why people are interested. So, what we are going to do is use this model as a thermalizer exactly solvable example of a thermalizer and we are going to couple it to the localized light. Uh, so, we take Anderson insulator and we couple in this manner. So, there has to be some way it has to be coupled so that you have a large n limit with some random couplings uh, which uh, decays 
as a function. So, the amplitude of the coupling is random, but it decays with some profile which is given by the localization link. Again, you can write down the large n equations for this model and uh, you can write down the Green's functions of both the Anderson uh, sites and the SYK sites. Uh, disorder average Green's function, but we only disorder average over this uh, coupling constants, the J i j k l which is the S y k coupling constant and B i l which is the coupling constant between the bath and the insulator, the bubble and the insulator. However, we can keep a fixed realization of this disorder in the Anderson insulator. So, we can access strong disorder. So, in this model. So, uh, we are going to calculate the bubble spectral function. So, let me see what happens. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take this bubble uh, which has n sides, let us say 30 here and we are going to couple um, Anderson insulator sides with this in this concentric circle fashion. So, basically the number of sides coupled to this system increases as a 2D fashion as R square. So, that is how we are going to couple and we are going to see how the spectral function evolve as you increase this number of localized sides whether it changes or not. So, now we first take a small localization length a small coupling. And you see that this is the spectral functions and as you increase the number of sites coupled it does not change too much. Even to like 55 sites there is only small peaks which comes from this Anderson insulator. We are not really averaging over the disorder there. So, you see the peaks here. And even if you go to very large number of sites the spectra converges and it does not change much. So, it seems that this instability argument might be holding there. So, at least the spectra does not change. However, if you go to a large localization length and again do the same thing increase the number of sites, you see that very large number of sites this spectra which is a characteristic of thermal spectra of the SYK model completely get destroyed. So, it become essentially this spectra over here is exactly identical to the non interacting spectra if you would have calculated. So, that means uh, this bubble is actually destroyed by coupling to the insulator. And so, question is whether it is localized or not that we cannot answer in this uh, large gen calculation, but we at least can show that this argument of instability fails in this manner that the spectra completely changes it cannot uh, remain unmodified. So, the, I will skip this part. So, there is a <laughs> effective model that you can construct to understand this transition of the spectral functions which relates to some uh, work that we have done and published uh, about uh, some related models. So, essentially uh, the argument is that uh, uh, you co consider a only a region which is within a localization length to the bubble and you can show that this when the uh, this ratio this uh, pi is number of localized sites coupled to this uh, effectively coupled to this bubble increases uh, above one this uh, non <laughs> this uh, this uh, this uh, this thermal bubble which is completely non perturbative actually flows to a perturbative fixed point at least at low temperature. And if it flows to the perturbative fixed point you can argue give the argument. So, it is a quantum dot which is in a perturbative fixed point and you can give the argument uh, that the uh, Alsular Kamanev Geffen gave uh, for a quantum dot and you can show that this system uh, will get localized. And if it is al already localized itself it certainly cannot act as a seat to the uh, localized systems around. So, it cannot really do that. So, that is uh, how we understand this uh, transition in the spectral functions here. But for question is what about the localized when it is a small localization link. So, what happens there it seems the spectral functions more or less remain same there. So, uh, and the assumption seems to hold. Uh, so, this of course, as Arti pointed out has to be wrong uh, because it cannot be that localization link small will be thermalized. So, how it fails. Uh, so, we can actually argue here that uh, uh, that even at the low energies this flows to a perturbative fixed point, but I will not go into it just to show that we have. So, the X y X SYK model is a very special model. Uh, so, question is whether this results that we are showing is a gener generic or not. Uh, so, we did uh, is using some uh, <coughs> Hubbard model. So, model the thermal bubble as Hubbard model solving some DMFT which can be done exact uh, in this way in this uh, case defined an exact solvable model in DMFT and we found the same results that when the localization length is small the spectra does not change too much. However, when the localization length is large the spectra completely get uh, gets destroyed. So, it, it seems that is the general result not tied to the SYK model. So, what about then this question that what happens in the localization length when it is small. And so, there we actually do some exact diagonalization we take the same model that this uh, people took uh, uh, that this random matrix bubble coupled to this 
Anderson insulator for doing this exact diagonalization which defined an equivalent model in terms of spins. Uh, so, this is a Anderson insulator uh, of, uh, like spins in a random Jeman field and they are coupled with some uh, spin flip um, coupling. So, that is the model. Uh, so, what we are going to do is we are going to look into some quantities which will tell us about localization uh, in this system. So, what we look into is this quantity which is known as or called a many body thoughtless conductance. I will not go into the detail of it, but you can define some kind of uh, thoughtless conductance here as shown by these people. Uh, just to give an example what it tells. So, it shows if for example, this x x this spin chain uh, that uh, if you are in a delocalized regime, uh, this thoughtless conductance has a distributions as a fun, uh, So, there is a distribution function and uh, when you increase the system size, basically this uh, thoughtless conduction distribution functions uh, uh, shifts to higher values of g. And, uh, and uh, so, that means that the conductance is becoming larger uh, greater than uh, um, yeah. So, becoming larger. So, that shows that this is a delocalized state. However, if you are in the localized state, then uh, the uh, as you increase the number of sites, this Thoulis conductance shows that in the localized state it goes other way around. Uh, the conductance decreases, the spectra, the distributions become broader. So, it shows that this is a local, uh, this is an indication of localization. So, we are going to check that for our system and also we are going to look into the spectral functions uh, appropriately defined for this spin system. We are going to look at the thermal spectral function and also the typical spectral function. So, if you look at the thermal spectral function, there is no information. Now, uh, you have to look at the eigenstate spectral function and of course, you cannot look at each eigenstate and look at its spectral functions. So, what you do is what David defined yesterday, you define a typical spectral function which is defined in this way. And uh, if you can argue that if uh, the spectral function has only peaks, mostly zeros, then this quantity will go to zero in the localized state. Okay, so that's how this spectra will show. Uh, so this spectral function will go to zero. So that's what we are going to do. We are again going to have an RMT and add this uh, localized site around it. So just see, uh, just if we take an RMT without coupling to any Anderson size, we see that uh, what we expected that if you increase the number of RMT spins this uh, thoughtless conductance increases. So, it becomes more uh, delocalized. However, rather than increasing the RMT spins, if you now add this Anderson spins and increases their number, we see uh, interestingly the first it increases a little bit. So, it seems that initially this instability argument seems to hold, but then it turns around and go towards the localized state. And if you look at the thermal spectra, you will see nothing which is agrees with the solvable model example that we gave. It does not change at all. However, if you see the typical spectral function, you see the drastic effect that it goes to zero as you increase the number of localized spins. So, that means that bubble is essentially delocalized due to back reaction of the insulator. So, if it is on, uh, so localized due to back reaction of the insulator and if it is already itself localized, it cannot really be bathed to a whole thermodynamically large system. So, the question is why does it fail in this limit and that also you can point out. So, if you look closely to this uh, argument that I gave uh, matrix element versus the level spacing, uh, one important thing is that there is this spectral function which is there. And if you write the ratio, you can write the ratio uh, uh, like this and what you have to really look at the typical spectral, uh, typical ratio and typical ratio is given by the typical spectral function and this quantity goes to 0. So, even though this quantity increases, this eventually will lead to localization. So, it sh shows that in both the limits, basically their argument fails. So, MBL is safe, it is there in higher dimension and uh, so that is basically <coughs> the, uh, so my time is al almost up. So, so that is basically what I showed. I showed the arguments for instability uh, of uh, localized state in higher dimension and we tried to test this uh, instability. We constructed solvable models uh, where some of the assumptions of this uh, could be tested and we could uh, take some we could get some conclusions for a certain limit which is this large localization length limit uh, which cannot be accessed by exact diagonalization. For small localization length limit, we did exact diagonalization and we showed how this instability argument fails. So, it uh, turns out that the thermal bubble is not an obstruction to MBL in higher dimension. And with that, I would like to thank you and thank uh, HRK and Chandan again and uh, wish them many more years of great leadership and inspiration. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. That uh, I, I uh, this one.
is on, okay. Uh, I, I, I never believed the argument those guys yeah, gave, but the, 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 this is a very beautiful answer as to why it's wrong. It's wrong. Uh, just a, a couple of questions. Uh, the numerics you were doing at the end there, can you resolve the transition? How, how cleanly can you resolve the transition? You, you showed what happened deep, deep in the, in the uh, delocalized phase, right. deep in the localized phase. Okay. We can't. Okay, so it's, you, there's no sort of, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's typical for most numerical techniques. I was just wondering whether. No, so, so the problem is that uh, what happens is, so, yeah, so, uh, so if you go to the intermediate regime, right, yeah. so what happens is that this continue to grow yeah. and you expect it to actually turn back, but you can't reach this. And then the other thing, is, at the beginning, you, you, you gave the impression, at least you gave me the impression, that one really could construct the local integrals of motions, right? Yes, now, certain cases. I mean, that's extremely difficult, surely. I mean, you can do it very, very deep, deep, deep in the localized phase. Right. But you can't construct those local integrals of motion as you get anywhere near the transition. Right, right? so exactly. that's right. So the original Alsular thing, it is very deep in the thing. Uh, this uh, Dasgupta Maharaj actually can go quite close, but it will fail eventually due to some re resonances. And, and do, do, is your view that it will fail at the transition? No, no, it, it, will, it, fail, it will fail before that. It, exactly. it will fall out with this uh, resonance, long distance resonance. So it's so an idea. The RG doesn't capture. So it's really an idea that's useful deep, deep. And deep, deep, deep. Yeah, so it will probably is more non perturbative, so uh, it goes somewhat closer to this than the perturbative. But still, it, it breaks down before yeah, you. Yeah, it will break down. I think I missed something. So the earlier argument, which uh, is not supposed to work, mm -hmm. but it looks somehow intuitive that the when the localization length is large, then you see change in the spectral functions, mm -hmm. because then the wave functions in the bath and the right. uh, localized systems are trying to overlap with each right. other. And if you don't have the overlap, then it doesn't right. change. Right. But in your uh, argument, what is different that even when the localization length is large, you do, I mean, when, even when the localization length is large. Right, so the argument is here. So it's true that, uh, I mean, the effect is, uh, so the effect, so the thing is in, so in their argument, so what they neglected is this quantity, right? So the spectral form, yeah, density of state. So, I mean, it seems okay, they will not change much, even if you use small localization, that's what our expectation is, right? But we know it has to be wrong, I mean, it can't be true. So, uh, what you have to consider, they consider sort of a average uh, spectral function, but that's not right. What you have to consider is a typical spectral function, and that goes to zero, even when the localization. So, Milan, let's thank Milan for a wonderful talk.